This is 3 News Daily. Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Daily on this Friday, February 10th. I'm Stephanie Haney here with your top stories. And we start in Cleveland Heights today where police are investigating an incident where a woman admitted to shooting and killing her boyfriend. Officials say it happened on Altamont Road around 3 a.m. yesterday. The woman called 911 and told the dispatcher, quote, I had to shoot my boyfriend. The woman says the shooting happened after an argument. She was taken to a hospital. We don't know the extent of her injuries. The couple's 11-year-old child was also in the home, but we know that child isn't hurt. Now in the Middle East, rescue workers are racing against time to save people still trapped by earthquake rubble, where there have been more than 22,000 recorded deaths. Some survivors have been trapped for almost 100 hours as shivering Turks and Syrians push through their fourth freezing night. The two earthquakes have left hundreds of thousands homeless. The World Health Organization is now warning of a secondary disaster from cold and disease. The U.S. has joined more than 50 countries pledging aid to help victims, and people right here in Northeast Ohio are stepping up. We've brought you the incredible story of how the Turkish community of Cleveland has been accepting donations to help their brothers and sisters abroad. Well, this morning we learned that they've received an extraordinary amount of help from communities across Northeast Ohio, so much so that they can no longer accept new donations, according to the Turkish Consulate General. However, from 7 to 8 p.m. tonight, community members are holding a candlelight vigil at both the Syrian and Turkish Cultural Gardens downtown to show their support. We turn now to an update out of East Palestine near the Pennsylvania border where the mayor says he is frustrated with how quickly Norfolk Southern put trains back on the tracks after last Friday's derailment involving a dangerous chemical. And he isn't the only one calling for continued accountability. Our Emma Henderson has that report. If at any point I think that's going to be changed, I will call a press conference and I will call them out and we'll, you know, we're... We're going to hold their feet to the fire. I'm not, this is going to get swept under the rug. I'm not going to be the country bumpkin that gets, you know, talked over by a big corporation. Strong words from East Palestine Mayor Trent Conway to Norfolk Southern as residents begin to funnel back into town. The home of a couple thousand was evacuated for days following a train derailment and controlled release of toxic vinyl chloride, leading to an explosion that could be seen for miles. And like the smell of the chemicals, concern still lingers. I just want to make sure, like I can smell it. I can smell it right now. It's burning my nose. It's burning my throat. And this is my first day down here. Like the mayor, residents want to make sure that they don't become complacent about their own or their neighbor's safety. On the first day back, city officials say more than 300 residents have requested the EPA to do at-home air screening so they have an idea of what they're inhaling and, most importantly, what they're not. They gave the all clear. The EPA says the air quality was fine. But my house reeks of the chemical smell that was, it, it seeped into the house. Everyone we spoke to over this past week wants two things, safety and accountability. And Mayor Conway has already made it clear he wasn't appreciative of how quickly Norfolk Southern put trains back on the tracks through town. It made the village look bad. It made me look bad. Uh, my citizens were upset, and I, I quite frankly was upset too. The trains continue to run through East Palestine. Reporting Emma Henderson, 3 News. Thank you for that, Emma. Now, for more information on how to request personal home air readings, you can go to epaosc.org, and we also have that link for you on wkyc.com. Now, we have been talking about the reporter who was arrested during Wednesday's news conference in East Palestine, and we now have the body cam video from a trooper showing the tense moments after Evan Lambert was asked to leave because he was giving a live report at the start of Governor DeWine's news conference. So here's how it went down. I'm going to listen. I don't care. You're going to walk out the door. I'm going to listen. You're going to walk Do out not the door. Touch. Come on out, sir. You're going to walk out the door or you're going to jail. Do not touch me. Take Sir, can we talk outside, please? I am trying to talk listen. outside, please. And he escalated with me. I am doing my job. I'm discovered by the First Amendment. Excuse me, sir. The video goes on to show the News Nation reporter being taken to the ground and arrested that you just saw there. Now, he was charged with disorderly conduct and criminal trespassing.
The East Liverpool branch of the NAACP condemned this situation and called for the charges to be dropped. Now let's take a look at what's next now for the Westside Market renovation project. The city released the report on phase one yesterday, going into detail on the research they've had done and what it could look like moving forward. Our Brie Buckley breaks it all down. I think things can only go up. Carrie Carpenter is one of the new board members for the Cleveland Public Market Corporation, tasked with taking the West Side Market to the next level. There's, there's so much potential, there's so much that we can do, but we're going to do it together with the community, not as a solitary body. Thursday, the city announced the founding of the new nonprofit that will take over ownership, the list of board members, the phase one report for the market master plan, and beginning of the search for an executive director. The report lists some of the major challenges, like elevator breakdowns and inadequate electric heating and cooling, as well as top recommendations, like expanding management, establishing maintenance standards after a deep cleaning, and adding more seating for customers to dine in, to list a few. Whether it's uh, renovating the second floor for dining or event space, to helping incubate entrepreneurs for new businesses, to redoing some of the wings of the West Side Market to better serve both consumers and the businesses that are here. We got to get back to just running our business, focusing on that and not on the infrastructure of that building, because that's what we've been doing for the last good five years now. Don Whitaker is the president of the United West Side Market Tenants Association and says majority of the vendors are still cautiously optimistic, pleased with the progress and transition to new management. As most markets around the country, you know, when they're not run by the municipality and all that, you know, they're, they're able to fundraise, they're able to do all these other things to uh, alleviate uh, the pressure on the vendors for rent, which which in turn keeps prices down and all that, you know, it's beneficial for the customer too. Thank you, Bree. Now the board's first meeting will be held sometime in the next month and that meeting will be open to the public. All right, we are now just two days away from Super Bowl 57 as the Eagles and the Chiefs prepare for kickoff in a clash of red and green. The 57th Super Bowl will include historic firsts. It's the first Super Bowl with two black starting quarterbacks and 27-year-old Patrick Mahomes with the Chiefs and 24-year-old Jalen Hurts with the Eagles are also the youngest quarterbacks to face off. And of course, Cleveland Heights natives Jason and Travis Kelsey, the first brothers to ever be on opposite sidelines at a Super Bowl. Incredible. Now here's a little sneak peek at how Cleveland Heights is celebrating the Kelsey brothers. Of course, the community is rocking the yellow lights on their front porches, which they are calling the Light Up the Heights initiative. And one place you can find them is at Quintana's Barber and Dream Spa on Taylor Road. That is where Travis and Jason used to get their hair cut. So tonight you'll hear from the owners, Alex and Don Quintana, about what having the Kelsey brothers in this game means for their community. And the Kelsey brothers are the stars of our question of the day. You know, there can only be one winner. So if we wanna know who you are rooting for, Jason with the Eagles, or Travis with the Chiefs. You can answer our poll on the three What's New Facebook group, and we will talk about it during What's New at four o'clock. Right now you can see that Jason is in the lead. Interesting. That is our three What's New Facebook group, by the way. Okay, we cannot talk about football without sending a big congratulations to Joe Thomas, the Cleveland Browns legend who will be inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame come August. And I can tell you, it is going to be a big party down in Canton. Big congratulations to Joe Thomas, a first ballot inductee. That is another amazing accomplishment right there in itself. And if you want to see the moment that Joe Thomas found out he is going to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, we have that for you on WKYC.com. Ever the classy guy, it's a beautiful moment with his family at his home. You have to see it. Congratulations again to him. All right, now we continue to celebrate Black History Month here at 3 News, and today we have a tribute to a woman you have definitely seen on the big screen. Here is a little bit about the incredible Halle Berry. A star was born in Ohio on August 14, 1966. Marie Halle Berry graduated with honors from Bedford High School, where she was also a cheerleader. In 1986, she was crowned Miss Ohio. Five years later, she made her film debut as Vivian in Spike Lee's movie, Jungle Fever. 
in 1995, she was the first African-American cast in the role of Sheba in the television movie Solomon and Sheba. In 2002, she won an Oscar for her role in Monsters Ball. A little known fact, Halle was named after the department store Halle Brothers Company. It was the tallest department store in the city of Cleveland. With more than 35 motion pictures to her credit, we salute black history maker Halle Berry for her contributions to Hollywood. An incredible woman with an incredible career and definitely much more history to be made from Halle Berry. So that's just a little bit about her. We'll have more for you for the rest of this month as well as we continue our Black History Month features. Thanks for being with us today for today's edition of 3 News Daily. We made it through the week. Everybody have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday with more of your top stories from around Northeast Ohio.